Hi, I'm Joe from Cole's Music, and I like to title this talk, When Losing Your Grip is a Good Thing. Um, so many players I watch play, and their jaw and their embouchures are so tight, and it can't be a comfortable way of playing. And I have to say that I used to have this problem, where I would play way too tight, and a lot of times, when people are using a lot of jaw pressure, what they're doing is they're using a much heavier reed than they really need to use because what they're doing is they're bending that reed inward. So in other words, when a reed's vibrating, there's a distance between the tip of the mouthpiece and the tip of the reed. And that mouthpiece, that reed is vibrating against, against the tip of the mouthpiece. Now, we have different facings on a mouthpiece where that tip opening, that distance between the reed and the tip of the mouthpiece varies. Some are a wide tip opening, some are a very small tip opening. But what happens is when you use a heavier reed, you're actually bending that reed closer to the tip of the, to the mouthpiece and actually making it behave like a smaller tip opening. And so you end up playing all the time very tight here. It's, it's very uncomfortable. And I'm not saying that um, soft reeds are the answer. What it is is the reed you use should match the mouthpiece you use. If it's a very wide tip opening, you're going to use a lighter reed. If it's an, a very small tip opening, you're going to use a, a heavier reed. What happens is people use generally use a medium tip opening, but way too heavy of a reed. With a reed, what's important is not the number on the reed. What's important is the quality of the cane. So a lot of times when a student comes to me and they're using way too much jaw pressure, I make them use a lighter reed than they're using. And of course, when they first try it, they're clamping that reed shut because they're so used to that jaw pressure and they'll complain about it, but I said you got to get used to playing and allowing the reed to sing. Um, this reed I have on here is light for this mouthpiece, but I wanted to do that to demonstrate that being very loose here will allow that reed to vibrate and to sing. So to get started with loosening that jaw, one of the things I, I tell students is is whenever you take a breath, drop your jaw and drop it like it's a yawn. See? <sighs> Breathing like that. That automatically will open up that throat. In fact, when you take your breath, you should feel the coolness in the back of your throat of the air coming through. I often say, if you take a breath and you hear, I call it a backward H sound, but that <gasps> sound, that means your throat is closed. If you're breathing in and your throat is closed, when you go to play, it's not going to magically open. In fact, when I take my breath, I'm specifically thinking of yawning because that is going to open up that, that throat. So what you want to practice is playing and then stopping for your breath. What's really important is to exhale the air that you already have and take your new breath, but take it like a yawn, but with the mouthpiece in place. See how far I'm opening up? And what happens when I'm, I'm trying to show students to do that, it's they can't move the jaw. They, they're, they're doing this. Like they're hardly opening up or they're going through the corners, right? And so what happens is that jaw is getting tighter and tighter and tighter. Um, but taking that long, breath and taking your time and so what I always you know you always hear about long tones but it's just so important for that to practice your breath and then the other thing is warming up playing octaves so in other words playing the lower note and then going the octave but making sure there's no tightening of the jaw at all and once again I always talk about scales but that's that's the great thing about scales playing through a two octave scale and making sure that jaw just stays relaxed from the beginning to the end of that scale. One of my favorite saxophonists was a fellow named Johnny Hodges, who was a star with the Duke Ellington Band. And what's great is there's a lot of videos of him playing on, on YouTube. And uh, one of the, uh, there's a couple that I particularly enjoy. One is uh, All of Me 
uh, and another one is on the sunny side of the street. But you watch Hodges play, and you can see that deliberate opening of the jaw. So he'll be playing. And then he takes that. You can see that every single time he's very conscious about opening that jaw. And that will help open up your sound and make your playing much more relaxed. So another little technique to try.